and welcome back to the Verbal Money Podcast. This podcast was not afraid to deal with the big questions, just like can Phil DeFries clench another fighter of the year from BMTV with a win this weekend against Tom Duffy? Um, we've got a lot of fight cards to, to go through, so not a whole lot of news um, and not a whole lot of talking points from the UFC. Uh, I'm going to start by just saying that... Uh, I don't tend to be one of those people that slags off UFC events when they're not too strong because you wait a couple of weeks and a pay-per-view comes around and everyone's happy again. But I I'm starting to get really tired of these Apex events now. And, and these two, I think, are the ones that have done it for me. Um, but either way, one of the best performances of the year, maybe, from Aaron Blanchfield in the main event to defeat Jessica Andrade on late notice. Uh, there's no one better to talk about that than Steve, who might have pulled an absolute blinder by picking Aaron Blanchfield to end the year as world champion. I'm starting to think it might happen, mate. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, who picked Aaron Blanchfield for the champion again? Um, who was that? Um, yeah, just incredible. And I did pick her to win this fight. I think it would, I thought it would take a little bit longer than that, but I mean... And she took some heavy shots on route to getting that victory as well. So just all around a great performance um, with that rear naked choke finish, of course. Um, yeah. And I got onto it and I see people saying, oh, maybe do Erin Blanchfield versus Manon Furo next. No. She beat Jessica Andrade. Give her the title shot. Um, that's just annoying. Um, and not just because I want the point at the end of the year, um, which, you know, I kind of said is like mm, that could be cool if that happens. I'm all in now. I think it's going to happen. All in on Aaron Bradfield. Let's go. I mean, there's a very high likelihood now. I think so. Very yeah. high. I mean, Talia Santos controlled or did some good work on Valentina with her wrestling. I was I'm not going to say controlled, but um, she did good work in that fight. I think Aaron Blanchfield is a better grappler than her, um, especially in terms of getting submissions and just keep in control um obviously you look at the way she controlled molly you know obviously there's a big difference between molly mccann and valentina shoshenko that's not what i'm getting at but um yeah she's just dominant when she gets on the ground um so it's a really interesting fight if she gets in there with valentina this year i think yeah. she answered a lot of questions that we we kind of wanted to be answered as well like we we didn't really know how her striking defense would kind of match yeah. up against like the elite of the division it's so, like like steve said molly mccann's not exactly like in the top five of that division um jessica okay. andrade is though she's been in there with the best she's fought for straw white and floor white gold like she's mm -hmm. not a she's not a bad fighter by any means um and that was the question marks we had about blanchfield coming in could she deal with the the striking of someone like that and she did really well to to deal with that like steve said she she did get caught with a couple of shots but it was how she reacted to those those shots and flurry that she did get caught with. Yeah. To then just she looked great as well. It's like on, on the stand up exchanges. She, yeah, she was la she was landing yeah. on Andrade a lot as well. That's the most yeah. of that. That she just looked really really well rounded, like at a very elite level, which is it's scary being as though she's only twenty three years old. Yeah, for sure. And like uh, Jessica Andrade on a really impressive three fight win streak as well. This isn't just the person that yeah. has fought for the belt. Like she's still right there in and around the top of the division. Uh, Jake. I'm a world champion. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Uh, Jake, do you think uh, Aaron Blanchfield should have one more or would you book her straight in for Shevchenko? Or I, I say Shevchenko. Obviously, she has a fight coming up, but. <laughs> Shevchenko. Yeah, look, it's, it's going to be Shevchenko. Grasso is not going to be Shevchenko. I think that's fair enough to say. I would personally like to see her fight Fioro. I know Steve obviously wants her to go in and win the title straight away because he has her picked, and that's fine. I, I, like, I wouldn't be opposed to her getting a title shot straight away. I'd just like to see her get one more fight because I don't think Fioro is quite deserving of a title shot yet, and I don't think Blanchfield is like just one really solid win. And that's it. Not to say Andrade isn't. Like, as, as I was saying, you can give Blanchfield the title shot now and I wouldn't complain. But I, I would like to see it. And I'd like to see it five rounds. Great fight. I mean, uh, I, I think I think she's going to get it. I think Blanchfield's going to get the next shot. I don't think she's going to have to fight anyone else. But then uh, Madame Faro kept saying about how she wanted one more before Shevchenko. So uh, she could definitely push for it and they could make that happen. Um, she yeah. fought Santos though maybe like 
Warley, Wall Blanchfield fights for the title, and then them two kind of figure out who's next after Blanchfield, and then obviously I suppose it depends how Grasso Shevchenko plays out, and then the possibility after that of Blanchfield versus whoever the champion is at the time. But, yeah, uh, yeah, fear, there's, there's definitely options for for Thoreau. Like like I said, Santos maybe if she's not I, a boy. I don't know why she pulled out. Does anybody know what the it was visa it was. Oh, visa. Oh, was even think, even better than she's. I think she's it was a corner to... visa actually. Baraka. So she it, at least it wasn't an injury that she's going to be yeah. sidelined for a certain amount of time for. So there's a possibility that she po- yeah. possibly fights Firo, but who knows? We look at Firo. Her last win, um, Caitlin Chukagian decision. With all due respect to Caitlin Chukagian, perennial number three best fighter in the division. These are not equivalent wins. Hmm. Oh, finishing Jessica Andrade like that um, is just, it's not the one that Furo has got, which is why I would say um, get Blanchfield in and now ahead of Furo. And then, like you said, Furo. Um, yeah, Furo wants another one anyway, doesn't she? So, like, yeah. it just makes sense to, to I give Furo and Talia makes sense. Yeah. And it, yeah. The fact that Blanchard's 23, it's such like a win-win situation for her. I said that in, in this fight against Andrade. It was like a win-win situation for her because if she didn't beat Jessica Andrade this early on in her career, then like, no, she's not going to lose stock because she's 23 and she's like, everyone knows that she's got massive potential. So either way, it was a bit of a win-win. The fact that she went in there and looked as good as she did, like that makes it even, even better, like... But yeah, I, I think it's like a win-win situation for her to even fight for the title next because she doesn't lose stock if she loses. Yeah, for sure. You also, um, you kind of book yourself into a corner if you book her and uh, Manon Perot because I think Perot should fight Santos because you can't rebook Blanchfield and Santos now. She went and beat Jessica Andrade mm-hmm. who stepped in on late notice. That's that's done. you got to move forward. Um Despite my initial impressions after checking uh, through Twitter after the event had ended, there was more than one fight on this card. Um, so we do have some some other things to to talk about. I think we should start with Jake's public enemy number one, Alexander Hernandez. <laughs> a man who has been through a lot, stepping in on late notice to face Jim Miller, threats against his life. I, <laughs> it's been a hell of a journey this week for Alexander Hernandez. Oh. Uh, and despite that, Jake still doesn't think he won. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jake just has something against it. Jake, your audio can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. No idea where that happened. Might be back to uh, the, the Hernandez fault, Jake. <laughs> oh. That's what it was. That's what killed his computer. Oh, for fuck's sake. They thought he was going to make another threat and just immediately cut the mic. Jake, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you say some nice words about Alexander Hernandez. You know what? Don't, I was don't. going to say, what's the weapon of choice this time? <laughs> okay, no, no threats against Hernandez. He actually put on a better show than I expected. I don't think he won. I thought Jim Miller won rounds one and three. And that's nothing got to do with the fact that I don't like Alexander Hernandez or the fact that I had money on Jim Miller. That's just because I thought he won the fight. Uh, some nice words about Alexander Hernandez. Uh, his body, like his his midsection is oddly aesthetically pleasing. If that's a compliment. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what? I don't know what I was oh, expecting, but it wasn't that. We'll, we'll take it as a compliment uh, on behalf of Alexander Hernandez. <laughs> we will take that. No. Another thing on him, it dawned on me this weekend. It's it's um, the best you're getting, so <laughs> take it. Before we move on from this card, I tasked Jake with with saying a nice thing about Alexander Hernandez, which is is difficult. Um, I'm 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 now going to task Jamie and Steve with picking something out that we can talk about, and then we can move on uh, to the to the upcoming fights uh, this weekend. Uh, Steve, I know that you were particularly uh, impressed by the fight between Evan Elder and Nazim Sadikov. 
I want to say. Yeah, that's the guy. Um, it was a, it was just a really fun fight until Doctor Stoppage um, for a cut right above the right on the eyebrow, right on the eyelid. It was a bad cut. It stopped straight away. Doctor didn't even give it a second look. Um, but it was caused by a headbutt. So, which um, the um, Sadikov admitted in the press conference. Um, so my suspicion is that's going to get reversed into a no contest. Um, there's one more thing I would want to talk, want to touch on very. Briefly, a really good finish, but um, I can leave that to Jamie if he knows what I'm talking about. Go ahead, Steve. I was just about to say the cut was very bad, and I'm not surprised it was stopped. Yeah, it, was, it, it was a terrible cut. I know you guys weren't really paying attention to the card. You saw the cut, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. awful cut. But yeah, take it away, Steve. Go ahead. Um, the other one is the Myra Bueno Silva Niba. Yeah. She's great. Yeah, she's um, 10 and 2. Um, only losses in the UFC are to Manon Furo, who we just talked about, and Barina Morose. She's putting on a good run. And I didn't catch this on the news, but one of you guys said, I think Lena Landsberg retired after the fight. Yeah, was that a uh, Hinks maybe? I think so. I didn't, I didn't see that on any news or any interviews or anything, but I'll just double check that real quick. Her, her like, Octagon interview had me really locked in, by the way. I don't yes, know why, yes, yes, but I was just like, I was gripped to the TV. Yeah, Lena Landsberg announced her retirement after the fight. Mm. Which, you know, she's obviously someone that's been ranked for a, a while now in that um, sort of 12 to 15 area. Mm. Um, I don't know whether we want to go into this because I, I feel like it, it's just us saying how... Uh, how boring it was over and over again. But uh, Jamie, are you ever going to bet on William Knight ever again? I I don't. Well, I say that I don't think you'll get the opportunity. Luckily, to bet yeah, on William I was about Knight. to say, Cole. Luckily, we don't get to bet on regional MMA over here, so I don't think I'll ever get the chance. Unless they put him and Jordan Jordan right together for the next one, but I mean, <laughs> I would not be putting anything on that fight. Um, as I, as I said at the start. Not usually one to bash the UFC for poor cards because they do so many that you just have to wait a couple of weeks and, and one comes around that you want to watch. Um, but it is that was a horrible noise. Um, but no. <laughs> yeah. it is it is it is difficult to get motivated to be like, okay, that card's put behind us. There was one fight that you know we were all really excited for. Uh anyway, on to Nikita Krilov versus Ryan Spann, UFC fight night. Um wow. The, <laughs> and that's that's what I've got to say about this fight card. Obviously, there is one fight that I don't even need to talk about that we're going to spend the whole time previewing um, that we will get to. But before we get to that particular fight, <laughs> I don't even know where to go with this card. Usually, there'd be a couple of fights. So I'm like, that's the one we're going to talk about. I'll go to this you one, this one, this one. Decent. Yeah, Andre Muniz. Mm, nice co the main event is even that bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. It's more just the idea of Nikita you know, Kilo like, being in the main event. I'm also not too sure how much a win over Krilov. I'm not sure how much that does for Spam, to be fair. Like, I think he could have gone in, he could have come out of the Rares fight, kind of looking at maybe fighting Smith, maybe. Obviously, that was when Smith was. Smith was already booked, but I, I just don't know if a win over Krilov really does much for him. It's it's a weird it fight. It's like a, yeah, it's like a mid like ranking fight where like a win for each of them doesn't really like doesn't do he- like a hell of a lot for each of them. It spans eight and Krilov six, so yeah, I suppose he does push him up a little bit. He pushes but... him up to six, and um, he's going to jump Johnny Walker in seven, which is fine. Um... <laughs> But then above him, you're looking at Smith, Rakic, Blachowicz, and Goliath, Jiri. So Spam wins this fight. He's in for a big one next. Yeah. But I think he could have... He, I think he could have demanded someone like that next instead of Krilov, maybe. Like yeah, maybe but... like a return in Rakic. Obviously, it's a bit tough on Rakic to give him on his return, but... That's what's so weird about luck. it. Is yeah. Krilov is on a streak of beating Gustafsson and Uzdemir. And yet, I, I feel the same way that you do, where I'm like, I don't know if, like, Ryan Spann 
winning. Yeah, he goes above Johnny Walker and he, he takes Krilov's place, but it, he's still going to have to fight one of those top five guys in order to get anywhere yeah. near a title shot. So it does feel like a like a weird one. I do love that on Ryan Spann's topology, his win over Dominic Reyes is listed as power jab, which is probably a series <laughs> coming soon to UFC Fight Pass. Um, that's, nah, that's brilliant. Justice, justice for Slap Daddy. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, no, we ended up You're going to get it again. in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep the power slab going after getting screwed last week, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I have no idea where this is going to go. Jake, who do you like more, Nikita Krilov or Ryan Spann? <laughs> I have no idea where this is going to go. Oh, his mic's, his mic's gone again. <laughs> oh, they, they've cut him off again before he could make a threat against someone else. <clears throat> As I was saying before, I was totally cut off. I like Nikita Krylov more, I would say. Um, I just think he's a swell fella. He's a very fighter. It's a and, nasty uh, thing I've just... heard Jake say about a fighter. He's swell. <laughs> um... I don't know if Spann either. Um, I don't know. I remember him acting like a bit of a dick before he fought Anthony Smith about it. And uh, just like on a fighting level, he was like, speaking to Sam Alvey. That's like, that's fucking that's unbelievable. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be rooting for, for Krilov in this one. I took from that that he's going to be rooting for Krilov. <laughs> yeah. That's what I took from that. Yeah. yeah. Importantly, though, it it didn't it didn't go all weird when he said he's a swell guy. So yeah, that's no. that's yeah. the message. That'd be nice. That's the message That'd that we should all take home. Not that David Krom. Nothing at all. I, I'm I'm shocked. Honestly, I really am. <laughs> I, I'm gonna make sure that the, this bit stays in uh, of me saying that I think one of the best moments in the history of this podcast so far is me trying to set up Jake to slag off a light heavyweight main event and him saying that Nikita Krilov's a swell guy. Uh, that's like peak verbal <laughs> money right there. Now, um, just to pull back the curtain a little bit, I am taking notes and I'm going to, at the end of the year, I'm going to make a best of verbal money compilation. Oh, it's gonna be wow. a lot of Jake turning into robot and slagging people off. <laughs> but I've got a couple of things on there from last week already. There'll be a lot of Jake just grilling fighters. Yeah, look, no, look, notably so. Far, I didn't threaten his Jake. life. <laughs> okay, I just don't <laughs> like him. Funny enough, that's like the clearest your mic's been all day. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's when you shout. <laughs> you just shout the whole time. Would you like me to shout more? Uh, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know what? Only set me up when I have to shout. Like, no, lead it into a, me. I mean, it's something I can be aggressive at the moment. So let's, maybe yeah, like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. Uh, go on. We're going to talk about the, 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 thing that everyone is going to be talking about for this fight night card, which is the return of Tatiana Suarez against Montana De La Rosa. Um, we all had the kind of debate in our heads when we did the UFC champion predictions of will Tatiana Suarez get a title shot this year? And then obviously you have to consider that she's coming back against someone who currently isn't in the top 15. Otherwise, I think a lot of us would have uh, had her very close to, to be in our pick. Um, I don't know which you guys want to answer this because I don't know how I would even answer it, but do you think we will see the same Tatiana Suarez as the one that we last saw, who a lot of people assumed would be a title uh, contender and a champion within a few months? Um, it's been a long time, so I have no idea whether she's going to come back anyway the same. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, Jamie, I know that you're big. on. T we're all big on Tatiana Suarez. Who isn't? Um, what do you think? Do you think that we'll see the same Tatiana Suarez? I'd I'm a I'm I'd like to believe that Ring Rushed isn't real, Jay. I mean Kyle. And I, I'm gonna carry on with that thought and really say that I think we see a better Tatiana Suarez. Maybe that's because the opponent that she's gonna be facing is obviously not really the best. 
Um, so it, it's it's a good setup for her to look great. If she doesn't look that that great, then it's going to be quite. Well, I mean, but she's always got the excuse of she's been off for how many like three years now, maybe. So like it's it's one of them where it's like if she doesn't look great, then she's got that excuse. But if she does look great, then we talk about putting her in a, against the top ten. But it's it's so hard to say. I'm gonna say she does look great. I'm just gonna go out there and say that. Oh no. Oh, no, Kyle. Oh, don't worry. I'm fine. I just made a stupid mistake. I I haven't been cut off for a for a threat. Oh, I thought it was over. <laughs> no, I I <laughs> I haven't had my audio cut like uh like Jake's attic. Um, Steve, were you surprised by the opponent? Because I felt for a while that Montana De La Rosa was quite underrated in the UFC. But if we're being honest and talking straight facts. She is coming off of a loss to Macy Barber, mm. and that isn't the kind of caliber of opponent that a lot of people would have assumed uh, Tatiana Suarez would be coming back to face. Yeah, it's almost tricky because I think when you look at the division now compared to when Tatiana, like first, or like when first, or when, um... <laughs> yeah, okay. When you look at the division like now um, compared to when Tatiana last fought, there's a lot of new faces. So I think it's hard to throw her right at the top when you're obviously looking at people like Furo, um, Blanchfield, who have talked about, you know, even someone like Andrade, who I don't think even was in that division when Tatiana last fought. Um, Casey O'Neill, another one. Um, it's hard to throw her right back at the top when there's all these new faces she hasn't fought. But to answer the question, Kyle, um, I'm a little surprised that it's gone that far down. I... I've got the rankings up now. I could have seen her looking at that 10 to 15 range. Someone like Cynthia Calvillo, someone like Amanda Hebas, Tracy Cortez. I think they would have all been good fights for her to come back to. I don't think they quite needed to go all the way back down to Montala de la Rosa. Um, but, you know, assuming she gets past de la Rosa, then I think you're looking at probably that 5 to 10 range. Throw her in there and see, okay, she's back. She's He's proven that, you know, as Dominic Cruz, and apparently Jamie would like to say Ringless isn't real. Um, yeah. If she can prove that against Montana de la Rosa, I think then you start to think about how high you put her in the rankings. And I think you probably look at that five to 10 range. You know, someone like, it depends how the fight goes in March. Jennifer Meyer is around that option, is around that spot. That could be an option. Andrea Lee, Vivian Araujo. That's a good fight. I like that one now. I've sold myself on that. Vivian Araujo versus Tatiana Suarez is a fight after this. I think you've made a great point there as well, Steve, about the there being new faces at the top of that division. And and even just sort of through to rank 10, like they're all pretty much new faces. So it's, it, that's an interesting point. If she does look good in this fight, is she going to look as good as she did against these like, new contenders? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Tatiana's last fight was against Nina Nunes, retired. Mm-hmm. Then after that, she was scheduled to fight Roxanne Modafferi, retired. Um, yeah. But then you also look at before Nina Nunes, she beat Carla Esparza, who was just the champion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It works both ways, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it from the, the UFC card. But there are three other cards for us to get into. That being said, I don't know how much we're going to go deep into the KSW card, apart from the fact that VMTV male fight of the year, Phil De Freeze is back in action. So obviously we have to talk about that. Um, it's but like we should... Todd Duffy. That's insane. That, That's you know why what? it's just strange. Usually I would go in order of when they're happening, but I think we'll just, we'll do KSW now as we're already talking about it. I, I didn't have Todd Duffy coming back in MMA on my uh, my bingo card for the year, let alone coming back to fight Phil De Freeze in a rematch. I can't even remember how many years in the making, isn't it? Like 12 years or something ridiculous. I forgot um, people, honestly. Let me have a look. Uh, they fought 2012. in... 2012. Yeah, 2012, so close enough. Dos Santos versus is... Velazquez 2. That feels like... Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I'm just having a look at the... Having a look at that card. Jim Miller, Joe Lozon in the co-main event. But that could still happen. Well, it, that's very true. Um, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> uh, of course, we're all behind Phil DeFries, VMTV Male Fighter of the Year. 
got to throw that in every single time we mention him. Um, we started talking about this as like, oh yeah, because he won that award and stuff. But we should legitimately point out Phil DeFries has been on a great run in, in recent years as KSW heavyweight champion. And as much as no one could have seen Todd Duffy coming back and the announcement definitely got some people on Twitter like just bewildered at the sight of that poster. It is Todd Duffy is still a name in the sport. I'm not really sure how, but he is. Um, and so I, I'm glad that Phil DeFries is getting a fight that people know the person he's fighting against. Like, th- this will give him more interest, if you know what I mean. Um, have we been sleeping on... Well, I was going to say, have we been sleeping on Phil DeFries? He was our male fighter of the year. <laughs> <laughs> we have, right? We've done literally the opposite. <laughs> he's VM for life. Yeah, literally. No, it's impressive that Todd Duffy has still managed to remain relevant at 9-3. and three. He didn't even have that many fights in the UFC. Um, based around a seven second knockout 14 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> it's just mad. Like, why is it happening? Why? Yeah. I like you said, though, Carl, I like it for Phil the fact that he's going to be able to get like a bit of a, a bit more of a shine against yeah. like a household name. As bizarre as that is to say that Todd Duffy is a, a household, household name in MMA, it's just mad, absolutely mad. I never really quite considered it, but yeah, about like how mental it is that Todd Duffy is like a well-known name in yeah. MMA. I'd never really what? considered it, but when I'm looking through his record, I'm like, yeah, why? Why? Yeah, people why will Duffy? know him just for, for the people he's fought. Like, but he's a confusing, he's a confusing guy. Yeah. Like, he's a personality, and there's there's always some kind of story uh, with a Todd Duffy fight. Um, so yeah, like we well, said, it's you started to change him. Let's be honest. I'm not making accusations, but look at the way that man's body looked when he first fought uh, Mike Russo. Uh, Mike Russo, uh, Tim Haig was the knockout. Uh, look around that time. Look at Tom. Look at Todd Duffy. And um, you know, if I'm accusing him, we might need to get this bit edited up too. But um, <laughs> go. Um, you get the point I'm trying to make. Just look at that man 14 years ago compared to now. And obviously, he's like, 14 years is a long time, though. Uh, yeah, I know. So, well, well, I'm yeah. finding my tab. There we go. Okay, I'm trying to find the tab with this card. There's too many cards. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, look at it. If you look at his topology picture. Yeah, his topology That man ain't part of Utah there. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. Um, is there anything else we want to say on this card? Uh... I think I we just we just wanted to get Phil DeFries in there, you know, he's the boy. Yeah. So um but I think that you know if you're gonna stay up if you're gonna stay up to watch the UFC card, you should you should do yourself a favor and watch KSW beforehand. Like <laughs> the the if you're if you're gonna go to that much effort to watch some MMA on Saturday night, you should do that. But then I wonder, does it clash with Bellator? It does. I suppose it does. I'd say so, yeah. We'll get to we'll get Bell- to Bellator last because Bellator is listed at four thirty p.m. KSW six. Oh, that's a that's a uh, that's made me think a little bit different about it in the being happy for Phil to get this big, uh, this big fight that people were gonna you know talk about and stuff. But clashing with Bellator is a, is a rough one uh, for KSW. Although I'm sure they will do incredibly well in Europe and they'll be absolutely fine. Um, before we talk about Bellator, because I do not know how that preview is going to go, we should talk about one championship on Friday night, one fight night seven on Prime Video. Um, by far the fight that I am the most excited for this weekend, maybe of this entire month, is John Lineker versus Fabrizio Andrade 2 uh, for the vacant bantamweight championship. I'm so excited for this fight after the first fight was incredible. The tension between those two guys, never in a dull fight, either of them. I, I'm so excited for this fight. Steve, I know that you've been really looking forward to this one as well. Um, do you think Fabrizio Andrade can do it again? Well, kick him in the nuts again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or punch. Was it a punch? I can't even remember. It was a knee, but the performance up to that point was so yeah. good. Yeah. 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 He looked great. Um, I think so. I've always been impressed by Andrade. I randomly stumped randomly turned on the one card on a Friday afternoon a couple of years ago and saw his debut. And I was like, 
this guy's really good. I vividly remember watching his debut and thinking, you know, this guy's really good. So I'm happy that he's got to this point in just a couple of years. Um, Lineker's a tough out for anyone. You know the power he's got. Um, but, you know, if I'm picking the fight, I would have to say um, Fabrizio and Dias gets it done. Um, Wonderboy, of course. I did the... Um, I was on the call for the one... They did like a press conference with them um, or with Andraj because Lineker didn't show up um, last week. Andraj was saying he's going to buy or he bought Lineker a new cup. So we've got that all sorted. So it shouldn't be any issues what this time. What? A new cup. Oh, he put a new car, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I understand now that you said cup, but I was like, what the fuck did he buy a car? <laughs> <laughs> no, he bought him a cup. Um, so... You know, we shouldn't have any issues this time. He's got a nice new cup. But no, <laughs> just going back to the point seriously, um, I think Andrade, if I'm picking Andrade, will get it done for me. Yeah. Uh, I'd be doing Hinks a disservice if we didn't mention the one Friday fight series that have been... Series have been... Oh, God, hello. Mute, Jake. Uh, <laughs> that have been... <laughs> <laughs> they've been absolutely amazing um from the lumpany boxing stadium and this is where this event is so uh i'm excited to see how the ring like plays into the- some of it <laughs> i'm just gonna carry on um because there's a submission uh, submission grappling contest on uh, on this card between daniel kelly and ayaka miura which is going to be strange to see that take place inside of a ring and how that hap- how that goes down how it impacts the fight um Tuan Chai is back as well, the featherweight Muay Thai world champion who was one's Muay Thai fighter of the year last year. Um, so first title defense for him. That'll be a big occasion. Martin Nguyen's back on this card as well. So it's a really good one. Um, and th- these one cards are not going to slow down anytime soon. Now, we have to talk about Bellator. And I do not know how this is going to go at all because we do have someone at the event to cover it. Uh, our favourite Irishman, member of Laura Sanko's Team UK. Um, Connor's there? But we might not even be able to hear from him. I do not know. <laughs> can you hear me? We can. Yay. Okay. Um, I just I texted in the actual Zoom chat just now uh, when you brought up Daniel Kelly. I said Daniel Kelly is like better than every Sambo fighter ever. Uh because she is, love Danielle Kelly. But anyway, Bellator, uh, I'm going. This is my first ever live event, somehow. I don't know how I've never been to one uh, up until now, but I'm going. Uh, I'm going to be covering it. I can't wait. I can't wait for fucking buzzing. And I know I was actually slagging the card off when it came out at first, and I was like, that's a shit main event to have in Dublin. Like, uh, But now that I'm, I've, I've actually looked further at the card, and you know what? I'm I'm actually a fan. I'm glad that we're getting a big fight, um, even if there's like no real home connection in it. Uh, Amosov and Storley, uh, it's a rematch from, I want to say 2020, maybe 2021. Uh, Amosov, like he's just he's a fucking beast of a man. Like 26 and 0. That's hard to come by no matter where you go in May. Uh, Storley, bit of an odd fight against MVP last time out, but. Still, good fighter all the same. Uh, I I can't wait. Just to, I mean, the, the there's good fighters on the entirety of the card, but I'm especially looking forward to the main event. Yeah, I'm I'm curious, uh, Jamie. How do you feel about the? I, we talked about this when it got announced, but the whole debate of I think it's great that the right. Dublin card the, is getting a big, Dublin. meaningful title fight, but it it does feel like a missed opportunity in that. Uh, it just doesn't seem to fit this particular date and event. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, 100%. But I think it's more for... It really does fit the fact that it's it's for the Irish MMA fans that have been kind of watching these guys come through. So, like, even just looking at the card, guys like Kieran Clark, Carl Moore, that fight, again, that fight Carl Moore versus Rosansky is a, a really good fight on paper. And then, but like down from there, it's a bit like lackluster, isn't it? It's like down, you look down the card from there, and it does look a bit bleak, especially for Irish MMA when you, you think of the. 
Jake Gaddy mute again. Jake Gaddy mute. When you look at like the card down from those two fights, it's a bit, it's not great for the the fans. Obviously, the the crowd is going to turn up no matter what, but you want like a big fight on the card for them. And outside of those two contenders, there's not really kind of much that draws you in. That's a. Hmm. I agree. Uh Steve, is there a matchup outside of the main event that you are particularly? looking at thinking that's going to be one to tune in for if people are kind of got a passing interest in whether they're going to watch this card or not. Not specifically for the matchup, but I'm really excited to see Norbert Noveni Jr. back. <clears throat> yeah, he's been out for about three years now. Um, he's 23 years old, 5-0. and um, Four of those wins by finish as well, all submissions. Three of them in the first round. So he's always someone I was really impressed with before. Um, he had some injuries, but you know, he's back. Um excited to see how he looks. He's against Andy Manzolo, um, veteran of the UK scene. Um, but yeah, I think Norbert Nareni is gonna come in. He's a shoot fighter's guy, he's one of MVP's guys. Um, he's gonna come in, he's gonna look really impressive, and then you know, middleweight, he could cut off his time, you could see him in the rankings. I feel like he's really good. Um mm-hmm. he's gonna look good and then I, I'm so confused. No, it's, it's on Jake. When Jake unmutes, um, we get the feedback. Mm. Also, Zabit's little brother, Kassan Magomedsharipov, is on this card too. Seven I didn't even notice that. I didn't no. even know he was on this card. He's in the first fight. Oh, yeah. I would have completely missed that. Yeah. yeah um, so, oh, oh, seven yeah. and oh, obviously a really good prospect. Obviously, he's got the name that people know, which obviously brings more attention to his fights. Um Dara Kelly, two and oh, good prospect. Um I was reading a list earlier of like top ten Bellator prospects and he was on there. Oh, it's crazy and Fabian Edwards well. are gonna be at the event too. Who is sorry? Oh, it's Gracie and Fabian Edwards. <laughs> A random well, hopefully duo. they're not fighting each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, Fabian's <laughs> legend tour continues. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, in before Musashi, why not? Yeah. But, you know, I think the Carl Moore fight will be a good fight. That's the one yeah. that I'm, I'm probably going to be suggesting people tune in for. But I mean, it'll be a good card because the Irish crowd always, always make the cards better than what they kind of are on paper. So. Yep, yeah, I was just about to touch that, Jake. Um, Peter Queeley, obviously, you know, the walkout. Mm. Um, just opponents, just not. It's like Jake said, it's a bit of like the a... opponent's not very good, apparently. Um, and Pedro Carvalho and Jeremy Kennedy is a really fun fight. Jeremy Kennedy's really found a home in Bell, so I feel like now. Um, so that's a good one, which is the co-main event. Well, there you go. That That's a lot of... There's a lot of events going on this weekend, but that's kind of like the, the overall preview. So there is plenty of stuff. It's going to be a nightmare recapping all of this whilst previewing uh, stuff coming up. But, you know, we'll we'll try Preview our best. Next week's 285 as well, isn't it? Oh, Jesus. Is that right? That's Jones. Is it? Ne- so it is, yeah. We'll wow, that, wow, that next week is not going to be the one where we try and get this done in one Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 